Becoming Sister Wives, Chapter 13, Part 3. However, every once in a while, private issues crop up that we don't want to share with the public. In general, the crew is respectful of our wishes to keep some issues off camera. They will generously leave the room when we need privacy to deal with a particularly difficult matter. Of course, the production staff does push and promise. They want drama. After all, since I'm a black and white person, I don't hold back even on TV. It's not in my nature to sugarcoat things, even for a natural audience. National audience on TV, as in real life, I can only be my honest self. The Mary you see on the show is the person you meet face to face. I don't think any of us realize what a strange experience it was going to be discussing our lives in front of our producer. The couch sessions is what we, in which we talk about our issues and problems were a real wake-up call for our family. We had to learn to think before we spoke. At first, when the producer would ask us questions about a particular situation, each of us would answer as if he or she was alone with the camera, not sitting on the couch with the rest of the family. Often one of us would inadvertently throw a sister wife or Cody under the bus, Publicly airing a grievance that would have been better dealt with in private. These couch sessions turn into a public form of therapy. Issues that might have remained dormant quickly quickly brought up in, out into the uh, brought out into the open. One of the things that the producers were easier to dig into was my relationship with the Robin. They latched onto my struggle with Cody and Robin's courtship and exploited it into a major storyline. I can't really blame them. After all, this was, in reality, what I was dealing with at the time. When they first started filming the show, Robin and I were going through an unbelievably difficult period. After getting the ball rolling between Robin and Cody, I had just stepped back in order to allow them to have the time, space, and freedom to get to know each other better. I was at a low point feeling unwanted and that I knew I wasn't going to be as kind of welcoming as I could have been. Despite the struggle, Robin and I knew we wanted a good relationship with each other. The couch sessions helped to bring our issues into the open and we begin to address them on the show and behind the scenes. The beauty of it is that over the course of the first season, Robin and I developed a wonderful relationship. Fans of the show can see just how close we've become. Whenever they stop us in public, we almost get some sort of comment about our relationship. Watching how close how we became to overcome our initial struggles and differences and became close friends is both rewarding and satisfying to me. It's also important for shows the aud- for it, it shows that the audience that something that seems dysfunctional at the start actually works when you give it some time. The success of Robin and Maya's friendship is essential to understanding the beauty of the sister wife relationship. Like Robin and myself, our family is constantly evolving for the better. The show brought that process to light both of us both for us and for the audience. When I look back on the first season I'm thrilled by our family's evolution evolution. I love our collective strength and the maturity that has developed. Of course there are still some moments during the first season that well Interesting to the public, I have chosen not to to watch. Of course, I have chosen not to watch one of those being the honeymoon episode. Cody, Rob, and I made such good progress in our relationship that I worry seeing them in such a romantic setting might set me back a few steps. I'm sure I'll watch one day when I trust myself with my emotions a little more. The wedding reception episode however is my favorite moment of the show when i watch it i'm overwhelmed by the love and joy i see on screen while i certainly benefited from being given additional form to work through some of my personal 
issues when the show began to air. Our family suffered both individually and a whole. Right before the first episode premiere, an article appeared in a Utah newspaper about our family and the upcoming reality show. I was working in a, at a rehabilitation center for troubled youth at the time. Again, I was in a situation where I felt it was best to keep my family and religious beliefs to myself. And one of my coworkers read the article. She was shocked, not because of my beliefs, but because I hadn't been open to her. Oh, I had no idea you had the thought that was she said. The fact that I was such a wife didn't bother her at all. I felt relieved that she now knew and still accepted me as her friend and I hoped my employer would be just as accepting. I had discussed my lifestyle and our family being on a reality show with my immediate supervisor, who subsequently discussed the situation with upper management. No one seemed concerned for six weeks. But the day after the series premiere of Sister Rice, the Lehigh City Police Department sent out a press release that they had been investigating our family. The next time I went to work, upper management called me into the office and fired me. I was devastated. All I wanted to do was to help troubled kids, and I was being terminated because my employer was afraid of somehow being involved with the police investigation. They said, Mary, what happens if the police show up here at the facility? Management told me that they were not firing me because I was a polygamist, but because they were concerned the investigation would bring unwanted attention to the facility and the chosen house there. Suddenly, I'd gone from being a private person to being a public figure and controversial one at that. Losing my job was the most difficult thing I suffered as an individual once the show aired. It made me question whether or not our family had done the right thing going going public. At my core, I knew it was right for us, but suddenly having to deal with losing a job that I led was very good at, at made me angry. Our kids started to come home from school on almost a daily basis with new questions or comments from classmates about their dad being prosecuted. I remember one time kids told me told us that a neighbor boy had told them that they had heard Cody was going to jail. Sometimes when our kids were playing outside or walking home from school, they would see a police car on the road and get nervous wondering why he was driving down our road quiet street. Bombarded by these questions and fears, we thought it would be the best thing for us to move away and try to bring some sort of peace back to our children. While the move was difficult on the parents, it was terrible for our children who were being separated from their friends and the only life some of them have ever known. I can't blame them for thinking that we had done something terrible to them by forcing them to move. It's difficult for them, especially the older children who had deeper roots in Utah, to appreciate the positive impact of the show and all they could see that because of the show they had to leave their friends behind. I know that when the dust settles, the children will begin to understand how important they used to be. They attend large public schools in Las Vegas when they are open about being brothers and sisters. They acknowledge one another in public in a way that was nearly impossible for my generation. They had